now for the shop report with What up, sports fans? Welcome to the Shop Report. I'm Barbershop J. D. Gully is off today. Here's what's happening. Before we get into today's subjects, topics, I first want to send a shout out and a mad love and a mad respect for all those who love and support the Shop Report. Because I know that if don't nobody else understand, y'all understand the grind. The grind from the garage. You yeah, the dig? So again, man, shout out to all those who support and love the shop report. Now, let's get into to some of today's action. As you all know by now, the infamous Duke guard, Grayson Allen, was suspended indefinitely for his multiple tripping incidents, quote unquote. Listen, man, if you love competition like I love competition and sport and the principle of and the integrity of and the spirit of and the fabric, then what this dude is doing is unacceptable. If it's unacceptable for Draymond Green, then it's unacceptable for Grayson Allen. An indefinite suspension. Man, he should have to sit a year out. Because we all know, and unfortunately, it's these types of things that are on center stage when it comes to sports in comparison to a Draymond Green because you can draw the similarities or the comparisons. And we hear the conversation about it sort of in a soft tone. I turned the TV on this morning. I'm watching Mike and Mike, which is a favorite show of mine in sports. You know what I mean? They're pretty much balanced, if you would. And I see Adnan Verk, Mike Golick, and uh, Mark Shrell is discussing Grayson Allen. Now, while they were discussing saying or admitting that he did something wrong and that he needed to be dealt with, so to speak, the tone in which they were saying it was real soft. It wasn't as venomous or uh, vehement when it was Draymond Green. Almost in an excusatory tone. When Draymond Green do it, oh, it's, man, it's kick, kick him out of the league. Then y'all wonder why it's folk out here, you know, who, who out here expressing racism and profiling. Because we all know that the eye test is, in most cases, the litmus test is the test. We only can react off of what we see. The national media's reaction to what Draymond Green does when he swinging one of them big tennis boots up in the air above the waist is not the same as it is in the case of Grayson Allen. Now, Coach K came out and said that what this guy did was unacceptable. You're darn right it was unacceptable. And you didn't need to look at the film further to see that. You sitting courtside, my man, Mr. USA. Yeah, it was unacceptable. But here's the killer part. After watching Mike and Mike, I watch a portion of first take. And I'm surprised, yes, by Stephen A. in particular, or Max Kellerman even, who I respect in their ability to deliver analytical content and substantive. But not one person mentioned it's not the fact that this dude is tripping cats. 
Because really, somebody should punch this dude in the face, man. It's the fact, if you look at the guys that he's tripping and the way that they're falling, man, his intent, Grayson Allen's, is clear. Listen, from the park to the parquet and all points in between, if you're a baller out there, football, soccer, who out, baller, you get it in out there. What this cat is doing, tell me who wouldn't the one time then got up and took a swing, a cup or, or two or three at this dude. If, if I'm playing the game and I get hurt, that's one thing. But if I'm playing within that game and you deliberately try to hurt me, you crossing the line, man. You got to be dealt with. So for him to have done done it three times this season now, we're not talking about last season because you can see elements of it. I think, if I'm not mistaken, he got a couple issues from last season. And then the comparison to Christian Leitner is made. Let me tell you all something. I could not stand Christian Leitner, but as a purist, as I like to call myself, Yes, I do. I respected the boy's game because he could play on a collegiate level. But again, in my estimation, Grayson Allen can't even play. The only similarities that you can draw between Grayson Allen and uh, Christian Leitner is that they both sitting at the forefront for being considered dirty. Because Grayson Allen can't play to me. For him to be the all Herrick and American, you know, carrot eating, you know. Yeah. I don't see it. And if you are what they say you are, which is one of my mantras, then ain't no way, man, you should be going one for too many. You look again, not at the Santa Ana player. Because that was really ugly. And as, again, Coach K said, unacceptable. I don't know, recall the team, but it was one instance where the opposition, I don't know if they had gotten a rebound. Well, I don't, I don't know exactly how they got the rebound. But the guy turns to go up court, and Grayson Allen literally trips him. But if you watch the way the dude fell, that's career, that's potentially career ending. And I'm shocked and amazed. And horrified and disgusted that none of the national media pointed out the fact that he could have potentially hurt somebody, man, forever. I'm talk, talking about the kind of surgery, man, that could have put somebody out, man, for a real a long time, making question whether or not they should ever go on doing it again. And then he throwing tantrums on the sideline, man. They could let that be T.O., Oh, he shouldn't get a job. He's a circus act. Chad Ocho Cinco. Yeah, he's a... Yeah. Yeah, it'd be front and center. But with this dude, it's like, well, you know, yeah, well, I don't know. Something got to happen. It was, it was definitive when it was Draymond Green. Definitive. And a dry that... To drive this home even more, Adnan Verk, and this is not verbatim, I'm paraphrasing here, and th- this is why they were discussing on Mike and Mike this morning, uh, the, you know, Grayson Allen. Unlike Draymond Green, who's seen as a nasty player when he does it, now I don't know if he's in agreement or, or he's just stating, you know, putting it out there. I don't know which side he's on, if he's taking the side, rather. Uh, seen as a nasty player when he does it, with Grayson Allen, it appears to be an odd pattern of behavior. Now, you take that into context with the video of him tripping players, and you tell me how in the how he hockey sticks do that make sense? Come on, man. One plus one ain't 17. Yeah, you know I mean. Well, guess what? Grayson's odd pattern of repeated behavior could potentially be season-ending 
like I said, for the players, he keep tripping. Therefore, Grayson need more than just a suspension indefinite. He need his ass kicked. Matter of fact, to be more specific, somebody need to do to Grayson Allen what Kermit Washington did to Rudy Tomjanovich. We all know the punch. And if you don't know, Google it. And again, even Coach K knew or could see that this dude's actions was unacceptable. I mean, I just cannot get out of my mind, man, all of the instances where I saw black players in similar situations. I'm not talking about those extreme. And again, I'm not condoning Draymond Green. Man, keep your feet on the floor, man. You know what I'm saying? If you want to rough it up with me from the waist up or whatever it is or try to root me out, you know what I'm saying, the, the stuff that, that, that goes along with the framework of the game, then it's all good, man. Mano y mano. But you that type of dude, man, who want to push me in the back while I'm in the air and I can't see you behind me or bridge me or trip me? Man. No, man. No, you're crossing the line, dog. You're crossing the line. I'm glad he got an indefinite suspension. It should have been season ending. That's what it should have been. Making his excuses for uh, maybe it's a, you know, he, he's got psychological problems. Ain't that funny? Man, I, I, how many cases is, is it of those? You know, they want to see if he fit to stand trial. Yeah, he fit to stand trial. Came out and looked right at the camera. That's cognizance, if you ask me. Indefinite suspension. Yeah, he should have been kicked out, man. You understand what I'm saying? Now, I mean, I know this ain't the NBA. We talking college here or whatnot. But <clears throat> I'm not the only one that feel this way. You know, uh, I think it was somewhere towards the end of the Mike and Mike show this morning and the beginning of the first take is where the news about him, um, Grayson, you know, getting an indefinite suspension. But, you know, prior to that, it was about what should happen. And then, you know, again, Coach K, you know, you know, the talk is about whether or not if he should be, uh, you know, the blame for this or something or another like that. And, and, I, and, I, and I felt like the talk should have been about uh, how Grayson is, is – he hurting dudes. You know what I mean? He, he, he putting their careers on the line, man. Putting their careers on the line. But I digress. We're going to slide on over to my man Phil Jackson. Now, I mean, I know this has been a story that took place, you know, a minute ago. But his posse comments are similar to George Carl's recent comments about Carl, I mean, uh, Carmelo Anthony and him not having a father. To me, that's that white privilege. It is. And I apologize, y'all, if I sound to some of y'all who may think that what I'm saying here is, you know, it's sort of profiling in a reverse way or racist or whatever. That's not my intention. I'm a realist. I'm a realist. And there's no other way for me to say uh, or express what it is that I'm seeing play out in, you know, in sports. They used to do a better job of hiding it. Now it's just so out front, you know, that's an insult and a disrespect to my intelligence. Come on, man, at least give me that. It's posse comments, man. And I'm not no LeBron fan, and I'm not no LeBron detractor, or at least not to the level of I once was beforehand. I will admit that. Were his comments racist? I believe so. Because in this society, what do we attribute posse to? Something dark, something negative, something not good. 
and Phil being the Zen master, I'm thinking this cat man should have some wherewithal to know better than to say that, especially with the climate in the country the way that it is in regards to such issues. They were crass. <clears throat> Made me start to wonder whether or not the game didn't pass Phil by. Has it, Phil? Has it passed you by, man? Call your boy, man. Call BSJ. What's happening? No, I don't want to smoke nothing. I'm good. But you can light some incense. And no, you're not going to get 35 cents. But yeah, man, you can't say that kind of stuff, man. No. You know, that front office position, you know, some people, despite their reverence or resume can't handle sliding one chair over. That's a reality too. And before this move was made, Phil going to the Knicks front office, that is, people I talked to, I mean, it was unanimous. They said, man, Phil just need to go on and coach, man. You know, that, that front office, that executive position, you know, you know, Jerry West pulled it off. You know, Jerry busting them. You know, I don't know if that's what Phil thought he was going to be, but, you know, it ain't working out, man. It ain't working out. But I do agree, however, with his comments about Melo as the basketball player, as I do George Carl's. I'm just being honest. But I'm calling it on the posse comments for what it is, too. But from what I'm seeing in the Knicks play so far this year, and I haven't got a chance to see many games, I know this. Phil keeps screaming that triangle up there in New York, and for whatever reason, he ain't pulled the trigger. He ain't pulling, pushing the right buttons. But I, I can see that not only will the triangle work, but it will work based on what Phil said about Melo and if they run it through Porzingis. Now, this might be a harsh reality for some because I don't say this in disdain or dislike for Melo because I do like Melo. Melo is a throwback in terms of I want to beat you <clears throat> and the, men the mentality. But I've always said, I've long since said, it ain't who you got on the roster, it's how you playing. And right now, he too ISO. And it disrupts the flow. Sort of like what I say about Re Russell Westbrook or Russell Westbrook. Man, I don't know. I always, always seem like I'm going to bite my tongue when I'm saying that dude's name, man. Yes, dynamic, dynamo. Love is tenacity. Everything he brings about to the game. But let's be real. His decision making, especially in critical moments, is suspect. Some have asked me, would I say Carmelo Anthony is a great player? I say no. Great player is a term. It's too ambiguous. If you don't do it on the D-end, rarely will you win. We know you can score. But how many times have we also said, we being us at the shop report and the people who contribute to the report, how many times have we said you could be a scorer? You one dimensional. You got to understand, man, it's not so much about chemistry as it is symmetry. If you ain't playing no D, if you ain't doing it, that's why these guys and what I like to call the today BA are getting graded on the same level or principles as those of yesteryear. And it's, you can't do that.
if your level, if if your defense ain't rose to the level of your offense, that means you have no balance. So if you ain't got no balance, what is there really to talk about? He does hold the ball too long. And like most of the today BA players, he does not play without the ball. He he plays incongruent to the Knicks flow of offense. When it's his mindset that needs to be in the right spot for him to understand, he he's the complementary piece. When it comes to basketball, that's what Phil Jackson and George Carl are saying. What he said about Melo was all too true. Offensively, he's a great scorer, Melo is. But his passing and his cutting and his ball movement, you know, if you watch, if y'all watching it like I'm watching it, he'll wear a shot clock out. I'm just saying. But it all starts on the D side. You know why Kawhi Leonard is my favorite player? Yeah, I know, and I've, I've, I'm redundant when it comes to that. But I'm always squeeze that one in somehow, some way. That's what we do at the shop. Not because of what he can do on the offensive end per se, but it's on the D side. He come and greet you. You look at the DBA man. These dudes, for the most part. They allow a guy to inbound the ball and want, and run from one end of the floor all the way to the free throw line before they start playing defense. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. So how can that be a good thing? That I'm letting you as a defender get into your scoring pocket before I, before I want to do something about it. Nah, man. I'm picking you up in the back. Basketball is 94 feet. But you hear all this chatter about the game. It's like the other half don't matter. I mean, James Harden, man, this dude getting millions, man. He just sat out there and told y'all, man, why, why should I concentrate on D? And now it's all this talk about him being the MVP? Are you kidding me? Seriously? And the NBA done sunk to a no lo- a new level, B. Yeah, at the end of the day, man, you know, going back to what I said earlier, man, f- bottom line is, man, Phil was just flat out wrong, man. He needs to come down. F- he needs to come from upstairs, man, and coach the triangle. It would work. Because all this talk about Ain't no more big man in the game. Um, you know, it's all about the stretch four. Look at Kevin Love. Yeah, them, them cats is balling, man. They are. They balling. But Carl Anthony Towns and Chris Stapps Porzingis and, D, and, and Boogie, too, you know, when his diaper ain't soiled. These cats is bringing the big man back, man. I don't care how you do it. I know the three ball is the is the thing that we see most. It's the one that they put out front. But at the end of the day, man, it's, the, it's about inside out, man. You got to have it in order to win. It don't always necessarily mean posting up. I get it. That's traditional. But too many teams' offenses are predicated on the three. It all starts from the perimeter. Guys work too hard to get a shot, man. They be out of breath by the third quarter, and then we be talking about his minutes. Or you know he just played a back-to-back-to-back. Look at his back, back, and back. 
Yeah, cut it out, man. It's whack, whack and whack. These dudes today, man, they just not built the same. For all of you, they bigger and they stronger and they better. No, they not. They not as durable. The triangle will work in New York. Running through KP and my man D. Rose, you know, I'd be remiss not to mention him. He could be the catalyst for this thing. That's all it really was. You got to be a catalyst. Now, there's been some to say that it was referenced by Melo could be Scotty. That's not necessary. Just be the piece in the triangle that flows with the, the other two pieces. And you'll win. Last but not least on the list, a celebration for 0 and 16. It's the Cleveland Browns I'm talking about. There's been chatter in this town about folks that raised about $5,000 for a parade to celebrate should the Browns go 0 and 16. Now, if that ain't bass backwards, I don't know what is. How is it, and I'm just trying to understand the mentality, because, again, that is a bass backwards mindset. How is it that you win a championship, you break the drought, but then your thought process goes right back to drought status? Yes, the Browns are 0-16. But that's not cause to come together. That's time to be cautious. We can't. I'm not knocking your fandom. But we're not 10 years old, y'all. We got to stop letting it get in the way of reality. Die hard this, die hard that. Man, these dudes are 0 and 16, man. Okay, maybe not yet. Okay, let me let me slow down a bit. 0 and 14 to be exact. And they getting ready to make history backwards. How's that celebratory in any shape, form, or fashion? It's not. Support the Browns in any shape, form, or fashion. But do so from the best seat in the house, and that's at the house. Stop investing your time. Listen now, they're taking your, your cigarette tax money to help, you, help them build it. they charging you $32,000 for a 20-ounce bottle of water for which you can go get a 24-pack at Walmart for $3.99. I'm just saying. They're charging you $100 for parking. $1,300 for a little four-square, little four-slice pizza. Personal pan. I'm just saying. And then say, for all of that that you invested... Well, I, I, I let me say this. The championship ring thing for all of the fans or all of the workers, well, actually all the fans should have got one, to tell you the truth, all those who were in support of the cast from day one. So the employee thing was nice, but, but you know, we bragging rights. All right. But to me, the two, they don't, they don't balance out. Some folks that invested a lifetime into these dudes, man. For all you stock market fanatics, analytics, would you do that for this? Huh? If you was buying stock and selling shares and all of that, I don't know, I don't know the details and, you know, the nuts and bolts of it, but 
No. You invest to gain. That's simple economics or economics 101. So why is that not applicable when it comes to the Browns fans and their fandom? It's absurd. I grew up a Browns fan. Like I said, man, when I was 10, it was okay, man, you know, for my fandom to be all there was. But as you get older, man, and you want to try to be better the next day or that you were the day before, you, know, you got this stuff got to come in the picture, man. The same team in the same city that you root for, now that you're older and wiser, I pray, because we all know some old fools. It's hard to separate the celebrations for a championship and Tamir Rice. Gone. Or Cleveland City Council saying no to minimum wage. The same people that they're taking money from to build for Dan Gilbert and, and Jimmy Haslam, they're saying no to for a little extra. Shoot. Even the president gave us a stimulus. Call it that. Give everybody a one in the city a one-time stimulus with a couple zeros behind it. But then y'all got $140 million in the coffers in the vault. That y'all sitting on and y'all asking taxpayers and y'all don't want to pay the people who make up two thirds of this fan base. The people who got to work overtime just to get a, a, a seat in any one of these arenas next to the pigeons. And y'all talking about having a celebration in this town, man. For zero, for nothing. That ain't borderline insanity. That's it's past. That's too far out there. No, they don't deserve no celebration. What they deserve is everybody staying at the house and them seats being empty. Season ticket holders. Man, you got me messed up. Season ticket to what? The Sunday ticket on NFL Network. Well, I got my bunny slippers on. You understand? With a cup of hot cocoa and some grown-up sauce in it. You dig? Man, please. I ain't got to fight in line. Well, with my kids sometimes. To get to the bathroom. I can go downstairs, open the refrigerator. You understand? Get me a snack or something. And when they down by 30, you know, Doing warm-ups, the Browns, that is. Y'all just get the remote. It ain't hard. Do what I do. I still watch them, yeah. I'm a purist at heart, man. I'm a competitor. I play sports all my life, man. I'm going to always stay connected to it. But I ain't jumping out no tree for it, not no more. When I was 10, yeah, because I ain't know no better. Talk about keeping it real. Well, let's be real. Man, the fact that they could even go, I could even fathom the Browns going on 0 oh 16 is unreal. Yeah, I know. I was around when Moses came down from the mountain with the two stones, you understand? I remember the time when the Browns were actually competitive. Keep you on your seat competitive. Man, but ain't no way in the world you should be asleep, man. No sooner than your backside hit that chair. Ain't no way. So y'all celebrate 0-16 if y'all want to. I'm not. All them teams that we dislike, you know, them teams we hate, they celebrate chips. When the new dudes come through the building down there in, in, in Hershey or wherever the Steelers play at, and in Maryland, they come down this long hallway. Now, I don't know this for certain, but I'm just saying. I'm visualizing. They come down this long hallway, and it's a trophy case. And the veterans stop the young dudes right there 
before the trophy case and they say, look here, I'm just imagining this is how it's going on. It ain't, ain't no coaches. It's players. Look here, fellas. Anybody that ain't ready to do what's necessary to get it done, when we get past this point, now's the time to turn around and go home. Because when you walk past this trophy case, understand what's already understood need not be explained. Now fast forward to Cleveland, or let's slide over here to the left to the Cleveland Browns. And the Browns chatter. You know what the Browns chatter is about? Terrell Pryor and his so-called outburst and attitude. Well, I don't know exactly what was said, but I've seen this movie here in this town before. Funny how. They ran my man Kellen Winslow up out of here, too. Even lied on him. Said he had a venereo. And when he went to the hospital, you understand what I'm saying, and found out, he got on the stereo and said, oh, no. I'm going to tell y'all how it really go. It was a staph infection, son. But remember, he had some of this or something similar to this. I'm a soldier and all that old type of stuff. Well, guess what? That's what the Steelers got. That's what the Ravens got. That's what the Patriots got. And these dudes down here collecting a check. A check that y'all paying for. Celebrate 0-16. Really? You got me messed up. And on that note, we got to run. But it's been fun. We appreciate y'all for listening to the Shot Report. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or email us, theshotreport365 at gmail.com. If that don't work, you can Google it. For Barbershop J, my man D. Gully was off today. Remember. Anytime y'all want to know what's really going on, man, come to the shop, man. Walk-ins are always welcome. Holla.